Let me take you back in time and let's imagine this is the summer of 2018. From every corner of the world, if you ask any football fan who the top three goalkeepers are in the world, one of the names they will suggest will be Mark andre Teshtegen. The shortstopper had just came off the best season in his career. At 26, such a fantastic record meant that the only part should have been forward. Surely, you would improve. Oh, how wrong was that speculation? In a short span of three years, Teshtegen went from untouchable alongside the likes of Lionel Messi to an expendable. The player praised to rival the legendary Manuel Neuer had begun to walk down the path of Joat. In a striking resemblance to the English international, Teshtegen too reached his peak before mistake began dripping into his performance. Fast forward to the present time, who do you think is the top 5 goalkeepers in the world? Stick till the end to find out. Barcelona have been astonishingly woeful in the recent season. A complete capitulation against Celta Vigo after being 3-0 up is the latest in the long-term line of hilarious defensive catastrophes. Is Ter Stegen the only reason for this mess? Certainly not. With the defense as unstable as Barcelona, conceding goals is inevitable. As the years have passed, Barcelona defenses become more progressively leakier, pressing is off-heated, movement is sluggish, and fitness seems to be at all-time low. Breaking open the Black Grana is now a simple counter-attack away, evidenced by Real Madrid's recent El Clasico victory. Minimizing the risk of conceding from the counter-attack is essential to offer Ter Stegen as much protection as possible. The six-second rule, a tactic used by the best coaches such as Pep Guardiola, could help the in. A high-pressing technique as we've seen against Espanyol that aims to nullify any attempts at counters from opposition team to win the ball back within six seconds after losing it. This must be an inter go part of any team claiming to utilize position-based football. Unfortunately for the Kules, it seems that Barcelona had been following the 15 second rule. Undeniably, it's not just the defense that is entirely at fault either. Ter Stegen has a save percentage of just 61.3% in the league this season. This happens to be peanut compared to 72.7% of Courtois or the unreal 82.6% of Yassin Kuono. Essentially, Ter Stegen saved only 61.3% of the shot Efest, which is a massive dip from his 71.6 from last season. If we are going to criticize the Stegen, then we must also appreciate his strengths. The biggest of which is his distribution. Many hail the Barcelona number one as one of the best goalkeepers in the world with the ball at his feet. His level-headedness and awareness are unrivaled. But the occasion slips up Ter Stegen passing is on par with many midfielders in the professional football. He is regarded by many as having Barca DNA. In fact, Matt is often the center of jokes involving the possibility of him playing in a midfield. But this happens to be part of the problem. He's not a midfielder. Well, any Barca goalkeeper needs to be adept with the ball. His primary role is to avoid conceding goals. Ter Stegen's recent form has seen him fail miserably in this basic aspect. He has been conceding an average of 1.2 goals per 90 minutes in the league this season. He has also underperformed on his post-shot expected goals by 1.6. This means that he has considered 1.6 goals more than expected. To put that into perspective, he overperformed his post-shot expected goals by 7.7 .7 in the 2017-18 season. This dip in form has not been gradual either. His statistical numbers were on the decline ever since a miraculous 2017-18 season. Thus, this begs the question. Why is he declining in the first place? A goalkeeper's prime is in his early 30s and not at the age of 26. One possible answer that comes to mind is injuries. Ter Stegen has been ever present in goal for Barcelona. Hence, one can be forgiven for overlooking the knee issues he has been struggling with for the last four years. His poor form may be irrespective of the injuries, but the possibility of its impact cannot be ruled out. Before 2018, the German never missed more than 24 days of action a season, yet since then, he has been out for 31, 78 and 103 days respectively. With every year forward in time, the severity of his injuries has only increased. Every summer the club confirms that the German has been playing with pain throughout the season. How does this impact the Stegen. 
To answer this question, we must understand the mindset of a goalkeeper. Saving a shot consists of three important stages, anticipation, judgment, and the actual dive. The first part is all about the attacker and trying to predict his move. Is he going to take an early shot at the near post or is he going to take his time and curl it into the top corner? Once the keeper has an answer, the next big step is to decide how to react. Simply knowing the ball's trajectory is not going to prevent goals. You need to judge when you need to dive and in what manner you need to spread your body to cover the largest area in front of the goal. Finally comes the dive, where you act on your judgment and move towards the ball. Timing is key. A knee injury can and will certainly influence the third stage directly. Not being able to launch with the required power means that you will miss your target. More importantly, though such a situation may also impact the other stages. Judgment comes naturally to most players and can be improved through experience. In the case of the shot stopper, however it seems to be declining on deeper analysis though, this perplexing result begins looking like an expected occurrence. Injuries severely hamper a player's performance, even Manuel Neuer went through a similar phase not too long ago. Unlike the Bayern Munich captain though, the Stegen fell coincided with a general defensive collapse at Barcelona. Thus, his relatively understandable mistake in previous years were magnified exponentially by the abominable backline. Naturally, he became one of the ex scapegoats for Blagrana mob out for blood. This probably led to him making irrational decisions and naive mistakes, from fumbling a simple crosses to leaving his near post wide open to rushing out of the box like a madman. The list goes on. Moreover, his lack of confidence likely worsened his fear of relapse and may have resulted in him holding back from pushing his body to the limit. While these reasons for his decline are speculative, they do indeed make sense. Much like the self-fulfilling prophecy, Teshtegen fixed his fate once he succumbed to the pressure. The situation is quite plain, Ter Stegen is on the downfall trajectory. His mistakes are costing Barcelona dearly and present Laporta does not have the luxury to sit back and let the situation sort itself out. Considering the horrendous state of their affairs, immediate change is a necessity. The club must thus pick one of the two parts, sell him and earn some cash while they still can or hope he regain from soon. Both options are viable. On one hand, selling him could fetch up to 55 million euros. This is a hefty sum for the club in such financial distress. In return, they could buy a reliable alternative and still have some additional money left to spend. Yet, replacing Teshtegen would indeed become a tough task. There's no guarantee the new goalkeeper could replicate the form from previous clubs. At the same time, keeping Teshtegen could be a worthwhile risk. The German has proven that he can be world-class. With Chavi's arrival comes a new medical staff, more intense training and the change in the atmosphere. The Barca legend new system could potentially provide better protection to the goalkeeper and thus helped him recover both physically and mentally. Given those two scenarios, the margins are slim and either choice could easily go away from the usual or expected course. So what should Laporta choose? With the appointment of Xavi Hernandez comes an exciting range of possibilities. The former captain has played under managers like Frank Rijkaard, Pep Guardiola and Luis Enrique. He knows what Barcelona need and judging by his word, he intends to revamp the astonishingly lazy and negligent attitude displayed by his previous predecessors. Xavi had the opportunity to play with a similarly mistake prone. Although somewhat younger Teshtegen, he has seen firsthand how Luis Enrique changed the keeper's mindset for the better, which will in turn help him revamp Teshtegen's confidence. In any case, signing a replacement in January is an absurd idea and one that has much higher chance of failure. That's the club best bet will be to keep Teshtegen at least until the summer transfer window. That said, this doesn't mean that Mats gets a free ticket into the starting 11. Xavi must not hesitate to drop him to the bench. If the club is going to have to suffer from keeper mistakes, why not let someone like Iñaki Peña have a go? Yes, he is inexperienced, but if Teshtegen does not learn from his mistake, then maybe Iñaki will. The remaining part of the season is crucial for the German. He must pick himself up and face the difficulties like a professional. The past is all about memory. It is the present that matters. He has everything to succeed. A new coach, a possibly improved defense and a fresh set of opportunities. Then it must be made clear that the next door is very wide open. If you like this video, 
please consider subscribing to the channel. Timo City bring you all Barca content, either it be Barca daily news, in-depth documentaries, and opinion-oriented topics relating to Barcelona. If you missed out in our previous video, check this video right here. And this is Team FCB. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next video.